Hello, welcome to the Houston Sound Chamber of Commerce Television Program. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President and CEO. We're happy to be sitting with Tillman Fertitta. He just published a book. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about his career and business. Thank you for joining us, Tillman. Always yeah. to see you. you it's a what? pleasure. It's great. I like to see you at the Rockets games at the <laughs> University of Houston, at the Texans, at the Rodeo. You've done so much here in Houston. We're so very proud of you. Definitely been involved with all of those. You have, you have. And certainly the trajectory as chairman of the University of Houston, the uh, sporting arena is fantastic and has certainly changed for the better. I sure. That was the object. And uh, I think we won that battle. Absolutely. Now, had you been thinking about that for some time in terms of basketball and where you could kind of make your, your mark there at no, the university? That really kind of happened accidentally uh -huh. that... Uh, I had the Rockets and then the, the Fertitta Center. The Fertitta Center, believe it or not, came first before the Rockets. And uh -huh. so it kind of fit all together. So yeah. I'm kind of happy that it did. Yeah. And let's talk about hockey. There were some conversations about potentially hockey in the uh, Toyota Center. We're, we're, of course, we're always interested in hockey, but uh, you have to make the right deal. And, and hockey has traditionally struggled south of the Mason-Dixon line. <laughs> And I'm not saying that we're not going to have one. I just think we have to cut the right deal and make sure that the numbers work. Because the one thing we don't want to happen is to have an unsuccessful hockey team. Well, <laughs> and speaking of knowing the numbers, that's part of your book, right? Shut Up and Listen, which I have read and has been very well received here in the Houston area and across the country. Talk to us about that process. Well, I think, let's go back to the hockey uh, I know the numbers of the hockey, and 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 uh, we're we're just trying to make the right deal, and hopefully one day we'll get that worked out, yes. and sooner more than later. Yeah. Um, you know the book has been great. Harper Collins approached me about eighteen months ago and said, "Hey, we don't want a life story. We want we want all these business tidbits that we see you talk about all the time on your show or yes. in magazine articles or on uh, when you're guest hosting on on business or sports shows." And and uh, so it was kind of fun to do, and and uh, it, it's just been great. Uh, I, everybody, I've never been one to share my ideas. But uh, this is one that I think everybody can see. This is how Tillman operates. Yes. And, and these are the things that he's done to be successful. And it's really great. It's I don't care if you're an entrepreneur or you're a CEO or you just graduated from college or whatever. It, or you, you're a, a sit-at-home uh, dad or a sit-at-home mom. You, it's it's self-improvement. It's everything. It's just kind of as much as it's business, it's a way of life. Yeah. The 95 Five rule. Let's talk about that. Hey, 95% of everything is right. And I promise you, uh, everybody else that ever ran the organization you did uh, probably did 50% right. And I think uh, we'll all agree you're up to 95, but I bet I can come in there and find that five. I bet you can. <laughs> I bet you can. And that's the, the art of it, right? Is always staying on top of it, not taking it for granted always trying to be better. And you've shown that and your employees that I've met that have 20 plus years with you, you recognize them in your book. Key is the people you surround yourself with. 100%. And believe me, uh, even in my own business, I can always find the 5%. And uh, if I look at myself closely, I can probably find 10%. <laughs> but but uh, it's just something, that's how you strive for protection is really worrying about the details and being good. And, yes. and that's what I love about the 95.5 rule. Well, let's talk about the hotel. Absolutely a gift to Houston. I appreciate that. Uh, this would not have been built. And the reason that Houston hasn't had a hotel like this is because of the amount of money that it takes to build a hotel like this. And we don't get the high rates like the L.A.'s and the New York's and the Chicago's and the Philadelphia's. And that's why you have not had a five diamond hotel in this city. Uh, but I kind of looked at it as a legacy project, and uh, it's going to be worth a lot of money one day. It's just a shame that I won't be around to see it. <laughs> well, but speaking of legacy, your children, clearly a legacy for them that you have built. How would you like your children to remember you? And what are some of the key things that you'd like them to take away from your career and you as a father? Well, it's the same thing, and I've told them. You know, we've watched certain families in Houston and uh, studied them and, and just because you're the second or third or fourth generation, that doesn't mean that you have to go and uh, not be out there anymore. And, and there's no reason not to always be a leader in the city, uh, leadership, philanthropy, and being involved. And, and, you know, just because I became a billionaire 
it doesn't mean that I don't still sit on boards and that I'm involved. And a lot of people, oh, well, this is who I am now. Don't ever change just because you make a few dollars. And, and, and uh, a city always needs good leaders. Yeah. And, and I love being involved and doing whatever I can to make this city a better place. And you have, including the police department and their foundation, children's charities. And what was really striking to me is I sat at your table when you opened up with Pitbull here in the hotel <laughs> was that while everyone was dancing to Pitbull and enjoying all of the ambiance, you had a napkin and you were looking around the hotel <laughs> and writing notes of things that you can improve. Is that just how you operate 24-7? Yeah, yes, and I think that was one of the first functions It here. was, it and, was. And so I had me a good list. and retain employees and what advice do you have to business owners? Well, I, I give my own people a hard time all the time because I probably have 25 VPs that answer directly to me or basically directly to me. They can come to me and I deal with them on a daily, weekly basis, monthly basis, and I've never lost any of them. I'm not going to say never, but, but just look at the longevity. My yes. two assistants out here, 27 and 26 yes. years, uh, you, you always... Uh, you always shoot people straight and you always tell them where they stand. And, uh, you know, they'll all tell you all these people have been with me a long time. That's the hardest damn person in the world to work for. But gosh, I would never want to work for anybody else. Yeah. And I, I think it's being, being the bull, with, uh, which I talk about, and it's being a strong leader and, yes. and people love working for a strong leader. Sure. Let's talk about television. That TV show has been just an extraordinary opportunity for entrepreneurs. What did you learn from that? Uh, <laughs> I learned that uh, all young entrepreneurs a lot of times uh, think that they have the best product in the world and they don't realize that you can get the same product right down the street. And, uh, and even though the ones who had a great product, then they don't know their numbers. And so uh, you have to know all aspects of business. You have to understand operations. You have to know your numbers. You, you have to know if you have a good product. You have to know marketing. And that's why I talk about in the book, find yourself a partner who knows something that you don't know. Yes. And, uh, and still my greatest advice to everybody who's made a few dollars, don't ever invest money with anybody who has less money than you. Yes. You know what's scary about this interview is that I have memorized most of your quotes. And one that I will add, which is similar to what you said, my father would always say, surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. 100%. And they can provide you with insight. And you've done that consistently. How do you keep up with over 600 restaurants and all of the entertainment and the hotels and the rockets? How do you manage that? I know you're going to say, well, I have good people but you are such an in the detail person. I, I have good people, but also just because I give them a mission to do. Yes. Uh, I, I have some people in an office right over there doing due diligence on a deal I'm looking at right now. And I didn't like the questions they were asked. And I, <laughs> right before I walked back in here, I said, do I need to run this due diligence call? Because I don't like the questions y'all are asking. I want to know this, 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 and this. Yes. And so it, it's just still paying attention to the details. And when you're this big, you just have to kind of pick and choose the details you can get involved in, but that's your own instincts that tell you, where do I need to focus yes. right now? Where, where does my attention need to be? The folks who work for you, obviously, <laughs> know who they're it, dealing with, right? 100%. <laughs> and and uh, But that's why this is a great project, exactly. because you got to pay attention to the details. Yes. and. And it's the reason that the organization that you run today is so successful is because you pay attention to the details. Thank we you. both operate by the same rules. Yeah, it's necessary. And I, uh, I remember inviting you to the luncheon and I was a pleasant stalker, as you know, three <laughs> years calling Rhonda and calling your team and looking for you at U of H games and everywhere else I could. And you said, well, I don't do that. And I said, Tillman, we need you to do this. And then you absolutely came out to about 2,000 people, which I know surprised you when you walked into that uh, big it lunch. Did. Yeah. So it was great. It was great. You I, were wonderful. People I, still talk about you coming out there and the advice you gave. Well, and because I, I, I do not you usually don't speak do and, and because I don't like putting stuff on my calendar, then I say, why in the hell did I do this? So you got me. I think it's the last time I've truly spoken to a group of people, a large group in Houston, Texas. Yeah. And uh, that was on the calendar. So yes. uh, 
we'll maybe have to make a return visit in Correct. a few years. <laughs> well, people still talk about that and certainly see you as someone that they admire, respect, and that it's not easy coming from where you came with $5,000, a hope and a dream. Did you in your mind think that you would accomplish so much? Uh, let me just say this, okay? I knew that I would be successful, but you've got to remember as I, as I was growing up, you were in different times and a dollar meant something different. And so, yeah, were you hoping that you would have a hundred million dollar company? Uh, yes, that was your dream. You didn't think about having a company that did a billion in revenue and then two billion in revenue and now over four billion in revenue. And, uh, you know, I did dream early on that, that uh, you know, I wanted a jet at 35, which I hit, that in my 20s, I wanted to get on the Forbes 400 and I, I hit it. And so I did have the dreams. Mm -hmm. And so, and I was never the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. I can promise you that. Yeah. But, but I just wanted it and just attacked to get it. And, and yeah. uh, here we are today, I'm very fortunate. So you've attained and reached those goals. What's next? Uh, <laughs> I know there are still more things you want to achieve, yes? I don't know. I don't know that I have something that I want to achieve, but this is sport to me, so I'm always looking for the next deal. Uh, at some point, um, you can't keep chasing, and you have to be content and happy, and the Rockets were kind of that last deal that just really made me happy. Yes. And at some point, if you can't get satisfied... Uh, you're going to be an unhappy person. I have to say I'm very satisfied. Okay. But am I chasing the next deal? <laughs> Absolutely. Correct. But also enjoying the journey <laughs> and the process. Yes. Truly enjoying the journey today. So as we close, let's talk about Houston. You've done so much for this area, for our country, but let's talk about Houston. What do you see as a great opportunity for our city? I think that we, we continually need to work on tourism. We're starting to become a convention city, but when you think that we're nearly the fourth largest city in America, we're kind of three and a half, if not three, uh, we're still like, I think, just not even in the top 20 when it comes to tourism and conventions. And I think that's something that we need to, to continue to drive. Uh, I wish we were a little bit more of a diversified city when it comes to different industries that were in the city. And, uh, but uh, we're getting much better. I think we've accomplished a lot in what we've done with our downtown area, and all we can do is strive to get better. Do better, do more. Well, thank you for your time. On behalf of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, we appreciate all that you do and for supporting our chamber. Hey, and I appreciate you and the whole chamber because y'all definitely have got it going. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back.